IBM once dominated the computing world. Now clearly something significant is happening, as their stock has surged 60% just this year alone. And recently IBM announced two new AI chips designed to power the next generation of their mainframe computers. In this video, we will have a closer look at what's going on at IBM and why these semiconductor chips are crucial for the company's future. IBM is now over 100 years old, and it has a legacy of being one of the biggest innovators ever in the history of technology. This company introduced the world to the hard disk drive and then in 1952 to the first commercial mainframe computers. IBM reached a new level of innovation with the launch of its first personal computer in 1981. And this IBM computer kicked off the mainstream adoption of personal computers. Sales were better than anyone had expected, and IBM PCs quickly dominated the market, comprising a market share of 80%. But competition was coming. Other companies started to reverse engineer the original IBM PC and bringing cheaper PCs on the market. And all of them were running on Windows. Over time, PCs commoditized. And as they commoditized, by 1993, IBM's market share had dropped to just 20%. Their financial situation was getting worse and worse. And eventually, IBM gave up on making PCs entirely, selling their PC division to Lenovo in 2005. One of the reasons why IBM decided to give up the PC business completely is that this is the consumer-facing business. It means it's highly competitive and it's got to be low cost. So margins are low. So this was a huge turning point and IBM decided to shift the focus uh, towards their Excel at enterprise solutions. Over the years, IBM reinvented themselves, and now it is a software and consulting company. Today, they are all about AI and hybrid cloud solutions, and we will break it down later on in the video because this is super interesting. The way to cloud was not easy. Again, IBM was too late to it. While companies like Amazon and Microsoft were building out their cloud infrastructure in the early 2000s, IBM was still heavily focused on its hardware and software businesses. As they were clearly too late to make their way into it, they acquired Red Hat in 2019. And back then, Red Hat was one of the major players in cloud infrastructure. This was a very important acquisition, because eventually it led IBM to the hybrid cloud, which, as we will see, doing very well today. What's so interesting, we all know IBM for their computers, but at the moment their main revenue sources are software and consulting. And this is very interesting, because this business model is very different from what Intel, for example, is focusing on. And we will dig into that at the end of the video. At the same time, IBM is putting much of its chips into research, more than any other company. I had a look, and IBM files around 10,000 patents a year, which we can break down to about 25 to 30 patents a day. They are making lots of research on semiconductors, for example. And on my channel, I discussed many of their recent innovations. For example, the 2 nanometer chip, which they introduced uh, about a year ago, ahead of TSMC and Intel. In their fab in Albany, New York, they've made several breakthroughs in transistor technology, including nanosheet transistors, VFAT transistor, which stands for vertical fat transistor, these are just a couple of IBM's hundreds of ongoing research projects, and I've got videos covering these innovations. Make sure to subscribe to the channel right now and turn on notifications not to miss the future updates. Recently, IBM introduced two new chips that also started as a research project, but now will finally make it into the mainframe systems. You remember, at the beginning of the video, we talked about IBM's mainframes, and they're still making those. They call them Z mainframe platform. 
and these are running transactions for every bank you can think of in the world. Now, these two new chips, Talon 2 and Spire, they will be used in the next generations of IBM's Z mainframe system, Z17. The Talon 2 processor is the main processor, designed for general purpose computing, and it features dedicated AI cores. This course enabling additional 24 trillion operations per second to accelerate AI inference tasks. This one is particularly useful for cloud-based AI, and we will discuss in a minute why. On top of that, IBM built a separate AI accelerator chip called Spire. This one basically complements the Talon 2 processor, giving it additional AI acceleration. Now, before I deep dive into the science behind these chips and what's going on with IBM stock, I want to share with you how I keep up with the fast-changing events that are happening in the world. It can be really overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. In a world where media bias is common, knowing what's true is more important than ever. That's why having access to unbiased, reliable news is a game-changer. I've spent countless hours researching, and I do get how easy it is to get influenced by biased journalism if you're not careful. The sponsor of today's video, Straight Error News, is solving this problem. They provide unbiased, straightforward reporting on the most important national and global events, so you can stay informed with a clear, unbiased view of what's really going on. Their media landscape indicator reveals where news outlets fall on the political spectrum, helping you understand political biases and make more informed decisions about the information you consume. And their media miss section uncovers stories other sources may have missed. And the best part about it, it's completely free and easy to use. So if you want more control over the information you consume, check out Straight Arrow News through the link below. Back to IBM. What is so interesting about this Spire chip that it's an AI ASIC, which means basically the entire area of the chip is dedicated for matrix multiply accumulate operations. Essentially, it does just one thing, run a pre-trained neural network model and make predictions for tasks like language processing or image recognition. Why we love a good ASIC? Because if we can build in the algorithm in the circuits level, not as a software algorithm, but really implement it on silicon, we get a huge gain in speed and efficiency. Just to give you a feeling, if we compare it to a GPU, a dedicated ASIC can boost your speed by a factor of 10 to 100. That's why everyone around is building AI ASICs nowadays. The Spire chip is an AI ASIC built of 26 billion transistors. It features 32 cores and 2 megabytes of memory per core. Both Talon 2 and Spire chips are manufactured using Samsung 5 nanometer process technology, and they're expected to be available in 2025. These chips will be used as a part of the IBM's mainframe systems in the hybrid cloud for inference AI workloads. They handle massive transaction volume in the finance sector, for example. We are talking here about 300 billion AI inference operations per day. So essentially, these chips are IBM's investment in providing better infrastructure for the clients. And now IBM team is looking to move beyond just inference and to use mainframe systems for fine tuning and even eventually training the models. So what's been happening with the IBM stock recently? This is really tricky because they are now doing so many things that it's really hard to get a grasp on where this is coming from. Basically, IBM operates four business segments, software, consulting, infrastructure, and financing. Here you can see IBM's revenue split. Software accounts for 43%. This includes a large software stack for enterprise, which includes hybrid cloud, data and AI automation, transaction processing, and security. 
This IBM segment is the largest and the most profitable. It showed strong growth this year, and it was up 7% in the last quarter. One of their most profitable business divisions is the hybrid cloud for enterprises. Basically, it's a computing environment where you have a combination of both a private cloud, which is exclusive for organization, where you can keep your sensitive data, and then a public cloud, which is available to everyone and easily extendable. And roughly 70% of the entire world's uh, transactions are run exactly through this IBM's hybrid cloud. The second huge part of revenue, 32%, comes from consulting services. And that's very interesting. To get there, in 2012, IBM acquired PwC Consulting, significantly expanding their consulting capabilities and workforce. And this acquisition strengthened their position in the consulting space. And today, IBM's consulting segment is doing exceptionally well. Essentially, IBM advised customers on how to improve their business by applying technology. And then they are implementing this solution using its own infrastructure and maintaining it. At the same time, IBM has other customers to whom they provide infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure revenue accounted for 24% in 2023, and this year it has been showing strong growth. Another big focus of IBM right now is on AI. They're developing their Watson platform, which is using natural language processing to analyze data and make predictions and provide insights so companies can make better decisions. And this is something we all need, right? better decisions. And again, it's subscription-based model, so clients can access Watson through the cloud, and clients are ranging from healthcare to customer service to finances. What we can conclude here, looking at the bigger picture. If we compare IBM, for example, to legacy chip makers like Intel, who is focusing on developing hardware, chips, transistor technology, IBM's revenue streams are more diversified, and when you are working on software and services, these are less capital intensive and you can get higher margins. Many of IBM's offerings are subscription based, like their software products and cloud services. So this means it's a reoccurring and predictable revenue stream compared to the situations where you rely on the sales to the customer. Still, at the same time, IBM owns the entire technology stack, from the hardware, the IBM power systems and mainframe systems, to the software, to the cloud management tools. The only thing they don't do, they don't manufacture their own chips. But also this is makes sense because it's a very capital intensive thing. IBM is making significant strides in the AI space and their earnings beating estimates. All of these factors, plus what we discussed before, contributed to the recent performance of IBM's stock price. Let me know what you think about IBM and the new chips in the comments. I love to read your comments. I think I'm gonna hold on my couple years old IBM stock for now. What's interesting, IBM is also invested in quantum computing. They've launched Quantum System 2, a quantum-centric supercomputer which incorporates classical computing with quantum processing. The idea is to eventually get the best of both worlds, to compensate for the fragility and errors of the quantum world with the error correction on classical machines. IBM plans to scale up the system to 100,000 qubits in this decade and use Watson AI to write quantum algorithms for the system. I'm actually looking forward to the moment when such a supercomputer with a quantum processor at the heart will make it to the top 500 supercomputers list. This would be exciting. IBM's research work is beautiful, and I believe they will continue innovations. And as a company that once developed the first PC, maybe they will be the first to develop the quantum PC. 
let me know what you think and i would really appreciate if you share this video with your friends and on social media if you enjoyed this video i'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy my recent paper you can download it for free through the link below there on seven pages i explain how the semiconductor value chain works the key players and the key trends for the next decade you can download it for free the links you can find in the description below and connect with me on linkedin i will put the qr code here and also the link will be below and i will see you in the next video ciao